Hi, welcome back. We're here about the final lecture on complexity theory on decidability. And this is often really hard for many students, so we'll show you some examples in SNAP. And I'm really proud that SNAP is able to share with you somehow how cool this idea is. Alan Turing, very, very famous computer scientist, one of the most famous computer scientists, often called the father of computer science, asked a question. He wanted to answer the question whether are all problems decidable? And what decidable means is a decision problem is one in which you have, you answer yes or no for an infinite number of inputs. So here's an infinite number of inputs in a function, and it, there's going to be some box, some function you write, that I pass in some number of inputs, and it, the, the, kind, the set of inputs can be infinite, and I ask about that a yes or no question. For example, is the number prime? You know there's an infinite number of numbers, I'm going to pass that in and ask whether it's prime or not. It's not really reasonable. That would be a decision problem, okay? Is a sentence grammatically correct? If you have rules for what grammar are, there's an infinite number of sentences you can generate because you're infinitely long. So is it grammatically correct given your parsing of that particular language, okay? An algorithm has a solution to a decidable problem, to a decision problem, to a decision problem, if it has a yes or no answer in a finite amount of time. And what that means is it can't crash and it can't run forever. Does that make sense? In a finite amount of time, it will come up with a yes or no. Okay? That means you have a solution to this decision problem. A problem is decidable if there exists a solution. Okay? So is prime number decidable? Yes, I can write an algorithm that won't crash, that will not go on forever and we'll figure out whether it's prime. You can do, you know, it's a very simple prime number calculation, okay? So prime number, question mark, yes, that's decidable. And so people thought that all questions were decidable, that there are no undecidable problems. Everything can be done with a yes or no answer. That was a big question. That was it. That was out there. That was fact until Alan Turing says, wait a minute. And let me tell you what he did, okay? I'm going to show you what he did. And this is hard, so stay with me, please. And feel free to rewind this video if you need more help. Okay, by the way, he's, he recently would have celebrated his 100th anniversary, uh, 100th birthday uh, two years ago, three years ago. So I'm going to review a mathematics concept you may or not have seen before, but it's called proof by contradiction, and you need it for the slide after it, which is a really meaty, brain-busting slide. We're going to talk about it. We'll have a, quite a bit of time on that. So I want to ask a question. Do I have an infinite number of primes? Okay, and by the way, this is Euclid who came up with this, this proof. It's a beautiful, elegant proof, okay? Well, proof by contradiction is the following. I assume the opposite. I assume the contrary, and I prove it's impossible, okay? So let's do it together. And I've stepped this step of the proof right here. So infinite number of primes, we prove by contradiction. So we assume that there's a finite number of primes, okay, which I list on this. They're on the table. I've written them all down. They're on the table. Bleep, they're all there, okay? Now, I take the product of all those primes, and I add one to it. So for example, if the primes were 2, 3, and 5, that's, let's say that's all I had. That's all I've found so far. And I think that's, that's finite. So 2 times 3 times 5 is 30, plus 1 is 31. Now, watch what happens. I take 31 divided by any one of the original primes. 31 divided by 2. 15 remainder 1. Doesn't divide evenly. 31 divided by 3. 10, remainder 1. 13 divided by 5, 6, remainder 1. OK? It's kind of the principle of that. So this new number does not divide evenly by any of these guys, any of the primes known so far. OK, ready? You agree? So far, so good? OK? So here's interesting. Q, this new number Q, this product of all the primes plus the 1, is either prime or composite. Prime means only divides by itself in one, or it's a product of two other guys, OK? If it's prime, then Q is not in the set. And you, you, but you told me a second ago that that's the most prime. That's all the primes there are. But I'm proving you that Q, if Q is prime, then it's not in the set, OK? If it's composite, since no prime divides Q, there must be another prime that does that's not in the set. That's the kind of way to think about that, OK? So either way, it can't be prime, and it can't be composite. So th sorry, the, the contrary says that 
this can't be the number of total number of primes. Either way, I said that there's a new prime you didn't include. If it was prime, then Q is the prime you didn't include. If it's composite, you told me that here's the primes you had that there. There must be another prime that divides it that's not in this guy. Either way, there's one more prime that you showed me on this table. So it's impossible that that's the finite number of primes. Therefore, proof by contradiction says there's an infinite number of primes. That's the idea. OK? So here we go. That's a proof of contradiction. You say, flip it, and you say why this is impossible. It's impossible that the fact you gave me that the finite number of primes is actually the only primes there are, because there must be somebody else. It's either Q or somebody else. It's impossible that that's the only list. OK, that's proof of contradiction.